Dredge is a fishing slash horror game, which might sound like an odd combination, like a first person shooter about cooking, but anything to do with the sea has plenty of mystery. And Dredge is no exception. Now I barely play fishing games. I'm not like an expert angler at planet fishing, but I am surprisingly good at fishing in Fortnite. He's one hit, he's one hit. There he goes. Jack, where are you? No, sorry, Alpha. And I haven't been fishing in real life since I was like six, and I was fishing in Lake Minnetonka, and my Snoopy fishing pole got pulled into the water by a sea monster. Or probably a branch. But anyway, I got really excited when I found Dredge. I don't know about you, but when I see an indie game on Steam with overwhelmingly positive reviews, and it's got a sick art style, and it isn't another colony sim, I get pumped. That's exactly what happened with Hades, and that's exactly what reeled me in with Dredge. Sorry. This banging, bold, blocky, greasy art style blew my Sailor Sather socks right off. Just look at the 2D artwork in this game. Look at those sharp edges. You won't find a single gradient of shading. And just look at the ballsy choices Alex Ritchie made on somebody like the Fishmonger. I mean, his highest highlights are right next to the darkest shadows near the eyeball, and the madman somehow pulled it off. It's genius! This kind of style reminds me of a more cartoonized version of one of my favorite concept artists that did the work on Dishonored, Cedric Perevene. Perev, Perevene. Perevene. He's French. Such strange, exaggerated shapes fit so well in this world chock full of eeriness and gunk. The 2D artwork is then, of course, with the gameplay's 3D low poly graphics, which since we're on a boat, I immediately thought of Wind Waker. But then the game has like similar shape language and unusual landscapes of something you'd find in like Samurai Jack. These references might sound all over the board, but with the impressive art direction behind Dredge, they managed to pull off this continuity of solid shapes, painterly grimy textures, mixed together with crude edges that all somehow complement each other, managing to show you different perspectives of this beautifully dark world. Did that sound pretentious? That's because it was. The game can be convincingly peaceful and beautiful one moment, and in the next, sink your soul to the bottom of Davy Jones' locker. Also, did anybody else think that these were real flies on their monitor the first time they saw the fishmonger? You know, it's not covered in flies. Fresh meals sent to you by Factor. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. Factor sends you ready-made meals right to your doorstep that you can heat up and eat in less than two minutes. Well, you can heat up in less than two minutes. You, I mean, eating, you, you have to eat really fast. Look at this, it comes in like a big box of like recycled stuff. So this whole thing just keeps it super cool. Factor offers a variety of delicious meals with a rotating weekly menu of over 34 meal options and over 36 add-on options like smoothies, keto shakes, and desserts. I wish I had some smoothies to show you guys, which they sent me, but I drank them all in one day because they're so dang delicious. Factor's a huge time saver, no dishes, no hassle, and Factor's chef-prepared meals take the guesswork out of what to eat and what's good for you. Good soup. The meals you get are seriously delicious and they're nutritious. Like, I like cooking, but I forget about a lot of ingredients. Like, I got the red pepper filet mignon, <laughs> and it came with a side of zucchini. Like, what am I, Gordon Ramsay? Before Factor, I would have never thought to eat a food that started with the letter Z. Turns out, I love zucchini, and every meal that Factor sent me, I've eaten them all. And you can order Factor today using my code that's on screen right now to get 50% off the first box sent to you. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. In Dredge, you play as a fisherman who's recently sailed to the Isle of Greater Morrow, which is part of a much larger archipelago. And yes, I did have to Google that word before making this video. You're offered a job to be the town's new angler, which sounds easy enough until you start meeting the people. Everybody seems incredibly on edge and scared for your sake. It's like they've all been watching too many episodes of Deadliest Catch and think I'm gonna lose my soul to the crabs. Everybody you talk to is like, careful sailing at night, boy. And it's like, I'll be careful. And it's like, you'll be dead. <laughs> it also doesn't help that the last town fisherman apparently lost his mind out at sea. I fell victim to the siren's call he did. Went completely barmy. In the game, you'll sail out to catch fish and later sell in town for money. And you can use that money to repair your ship and then upgrade it for a faster boat, bigger cargo, better fishing and faster fishing, and a stronger light that can protect you from the things that be lurking in the night. There's a main plot in the game that I won't go too much into to detail about, but I should mention that you'll end up unlocking abilities that can help you in your journey. Or do they? Harness in the power of Neptune's wrath be a dangerous game to play, matey. Those who play with a double-edged cutlass may be finding themselves getting cut. Just use the abilities in moderation. I'm not gonna lie, I was actually a little underwhelmed by the fishing system in Dredge. It's kind of like a jumpstart third grade minigame. Like, fun, 
but simple. It's not that difficult. It's not like Zelda Ocarina of Time where at like nine years old, I'm developing carpal tunnel syndrome, pulling in 10 pound bass. Whether you're catching a hammerhead shark or dredging up sunken treasure, all the systems kind of work the same where you have to hit your mark at the right time. But what makes these systems unique is what you're catching, where you're catching it, and your battle against time and other supernatural events happening around you. Ah! Hey. Hey. Hey, you get the fing heck away from me! No! See, there's something going on in the waters of Dredge. Something dark and twisted. You'll catch all types of species in the game. Fish, squid, crab, you name it. But just wait until you catch your first aberration. You start catching things that are straight out of River Monsters with Jeremy Wade. Two foot one, its girth is four foot three inches. Seriously though, cursed fish are like my favorite part of the game. They're all deformed and messed up. They add so much to the darkness of the world and they also sell more back in town. But you know the art style is good when I just want to see the cursed creature art instead of the gold that I'll get for it. And you'll catch fish all types of ways. You can do crabbing, fishing, obviously and then you can drag a net behind your boat it amazes me how many crab pots you can put out like I've beaten the game and I am just crawling with crabs now let's talk about an important part of dredge which is timing the game functions a lot like it sounds random but super hot time moves when you move if you're sailing so is the Sun across the sky if you're angling so is the moon's angle shifting around the planet at first the timing made me like really nervous about like days passing by like I'm running out of time but I actually don't think this matters. I think you have unlimited days, so don't feel bad sleeping through the night. Another awesome aspect of Dredge is the inventory system, which is kind of a weird sentence because in a lot of games, the inventory system can just feel like a chore, but not in Dredge. In Dredge, your cargo is this ever-changing puzzle that's a lot like Tetris meets Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tetris, just thought of that. That's what, that's what you came here for. And you're always trying to make everything fit as best as possible to make your daily haul as impressive as it can be. Let's see where this could fit. Boom. We make it work, baby. That's freaking dad skills for getting a car packed for our family road trip. And the cherry on top of the inventory system is the motion and sound design. I love the snappiness and the sounds of fish flopping around. It's so tactile, like the fish are slapping around on the decks of your boat. When there's this kind of attention to detail in games, these hills sing. Fishing during the day, you really do have minimal risk to deal with. But when the night comes, so do the mists and the madness, for even the sun can save you from the nightmares, lad. As the sun sets, your sanity meter lights up like Sauron's eye. And the longer you stay out away from the light, the more your mind begins to battle against you. Things begin to happen that makes you wonder if that was just a figment of your imagination or if it was actually a hostile beast from the deep. I love that the game doesn't really tell you how your sanity affects you. So these haunting things just start happening. So you have to decide if that was part of the game or if you're just going insane. Whoa. And scratch what I said about daylight. You'll come to find that it's not always fun in the sun. No. No! Why? Arr! Dredge starts you at the center of its world at the island Maros. As you progress through the game, much like Breath of the Wild, eventually they'll start venturing off in whatever direction you feel called to, exploring all corners of the map that each have their own distinct biome. Where do you feel the winds calling you, boy? Never eat soggy waffles, they say. So what will it be? Waffles? Or are you some land-loving pancake eater? The last thing I gotta talk about in Dredge is the music. Now I'm no Anthony Fartano, but the music in Dredge is amazing. A lot of it reminded me of the Sixth Station in Spirited Away. You know that scene where Chiro's staring outside of the train just like contemplating life? And I feel like that pairs really well with like the Lovecraftian horror of the game. Like how significant are you really? The music has such a great balance between calm moments at sea, but not making you feel totally assured. There's like definitely something afoot in this music. The question is, is it your feet that are in danger? And again, I love the small details of like when you catch a cursed fish, the regular capture sound slides out of key. Every place you go to has some uneasiness about it, has some secrets that they're hiding, and the soundtrack does nothing but enhance that narrative. You know what's the craziest thing about Dredge? And no, it don't be the mists that bring the madness and the nightmares at night. The craziest thing to me is that this game was made by four people. Four Kiwis from New Zealand made Dredge in unity. And sorry if this accent's not that good, most of my accents end up dissolving into some sort of Courtney British usually. And what's even more crazy is that they virtually finished the core of the game within five months. Of course they end up layering it with more and more content, but the game looked like this five months in. 
I've been lost at sea longer than a mere five months. Hearing about these small game development teams kicking ass just inspires the hell out of me. I just started teaching myself Unreal Engine and I definitely have a lot of ways to go, but all these game engines just keep getting more and more accessible and like, they're all free. Like Unity, Unreal Engine, 2D Game Maker. And there's definitely still intimidating parts about game design. Like to get the waves right, they had to use something called the Gerstner Waves Math Equation and uh, that makes me want to run for the hills. But after reading their whole game dev blog, which I'll link below, I'm not sure if I've ever read about a game being so perfectly executed from start to finish. And I'm sure the Blackstall team would be humble enough to tell you about the problems in their game development, just like every studio runs into. But holy cannoli, dredge from a player's perspective? I, she be a real beaut. <laughs> I actually like barely play fishing games. I'm not a, I'm not a planet fisher, planet fishing, I, fucking, this is a disaster. That's not good. That's not good. What's that? Yep. So I don't do this for real. Yeah, of course. You an important fisherman commercial or something? I wish. I wish I was getting paid for this. <laughs> I am. He has no idea how much money I can make on YouTube, how powerful I can become. Oh, I know my man got the two fat bitches in the eight ball right there. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means. 